we're now going to be expanding the application that we just built and using it for a data acquisition. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, if you want to save your progress, you can go ahead and click control type in and hit control S or you can go to file. And hit save save as. So I'm going to save the current file that we just worked on as exercise one. So you can go ahead and find the folder that you want to place it and you name it exercise one. And then I also want to save a new copy for to start exercise two in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save as and then substitute copy for original. This will allow me to keep a copy of exercise one and then open up a new copy uh, that'll be used for exercise two. And then I'll just change that to exercise two. And now let's go ahead and begin. So what we're going to be doing in this exercise is replacing uh, the data from the basic function generator with data from one of the simulated devices that we created earlier. So let's go ahead and click in the block diagram. Right click. And go to measurement IO. Here in the measurement IO palette, we have all the functions um, of the drivers that we have installed. So I have the DACMX driver, which is the driver for our data acquisition devices. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and click DAC Assist. And this is going to use uh, the DAC Assistant Express VI. So this is a, a sub VI um, that allows us to quickly create a task that will acquire data uh, from one of our devices. So I can go ahead and click to drop that. You can see the context help as I hover over it um, was describing that function. And now this will go ahead and open up the uh, Doc Assistant uh, wizard. So this will walk us through an interactive and configuration based approach to setting up a data acquisition application. Uh, this is really good for simple measurements and when you're trying to get started with an application quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to step three where we're going to start configuring this. So we're going to go ahead and go to acquire signals analog input and then select voltage. Next, I'm going to go to voltage in. And then AI zero, the analog input channel zero. I can see the other supported devices which are able to acquire voltage, but we're going to be using our voltage in module. I'm going to go ahead and click finish. And then that'll open up uh, more of our settings for our DAC assistant. So we're going to go ahead, change the timing, change changing some of the timing settings, and we're going to be changing the samples to read to 1000, and we're going to leave the rate as 1000. If I go ahead and hit run here in this sort of test panel, I can see um, some data quickly. And so I go ahead and hit run and we can see a simple sine wave, which is what uh, these data these simulated devices generate. Um, if I was using a real device, it would just acquire the real data, but the setup is exactly the same. So it's helpful, as I mentioned, for getting started. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK to finish. And then now we'll see this building VI pop up as the wizard completes. And this will just take a few more moments. And now it's complete. So now we're ready to start acquiring data from this uh, simulated device. But first, we of course want to create an output uh, for it to wire to this graph. So we're going to remove the basic function generator. So what you're going to do is click on it and then type delete. And then you can see the broken wires that were previously connecting these items together. 
can go ahead and move this item up pretty close to where we just had it. And then now we can hit Control B to remove these broken wires. And then now I want us to wire the frequency knob to the DAC Assistant VI. So let's go ahead and click to create this wire. And then we're going to be wiring it to the rate. Um, so this frequency knob will now be used to control the acquisition rate of our application. Next, we want to be moving the data output from the DAC Assistant to the time domain signal graph. So we're going to go ahead and click right here to create that wire and then click once again to complete that wire. And if you want to move it down to move any unnecessary bends, you could do that too. You can also change some of the settings that we were doing here before. So if we wanted to configure the device name or uh, the number of samples, we're able to click and create a constant for that. So we had kind of set up these settings before we had started the data acquisition or while we were setting it up, but we're able to add these controls later as well. So we're going to leave that. And then I want us to rename the frequency knob and you can either change that here on the block diagram by double clicking or here on the front panel. And we're going to name that acquisition. Wait. Now we're going to change the minimum and maximum of this as well. And you can do so in the properties menu by right clicking or by simply clicking on the smallest item and the largest. So we're going to go ahead and type 20,000. And then here we're going to double click and type 30,000. Four zeros. Um, and then move the knob just to adjust it um, somewhere because before it was set at like six, which would not be good. And then now we're able to run the VI. And we can see this graph. As we update it, we can see how the graph slightly changes, uh, which is great. And that was really all we had to do to just acquire our data pretty quickly uh, using the DAC Assistant. So it was a really great interactive approach for acquiring our data. That concludes part A. We're now going to move to part B, where we're going to be analyzing some of the acquired data uh, using an FFT function. So let's go ahead and start by building some of the user interface for this. So we're going to click on the time domain signal and we're going to add a second graph so we can view the analyzed data of the FFT. So we're going to go ahead and click Control C to copy and then paste uh, directly below it. And then you can move and resize that just as you want um, and it's no problem. Now let's change the name of this from time domain signal two to frequency domain signal. And you can see how that also has been placed on the while loop or inside the block diagram. And if it's placed outside of the while loop, all you have to do is just drag it in. Um, it's not too difficult, um, so just move it. We're going to be adding our next item using quick drop. So, you know, you can add items to your block diagram by right clicking and going through the palettes to find exactly what you need. Uh, but if you know exactly what you need, you can use quick drop to quickly drop it onto your block diagram. So we can do so by we can activate quick drop by using control space on our keyboard, and this will bring up the quick drop menu. As I mentioned, we want to add an FFT analysis function. So we're going to search for FFT power. And here we can see uh, the FFT power spectrum and PSD sub VI. So we're going to go ahead, double click that, which will now give that to us to place onto the block diagram. And we can simply just click 
one more time to drop that onto our block diagram. Let's go ahead and click visible items and select the label so we can view that. And then let's move this item a little bit more over here so we get some space. Um, if your block diagram is crowded, now might be a good time to, sp to spend some time uh, fixing it. So if you want to resize your while loop, you can use the resizing handles. Uh, you can create a box to move some of this code. So if you want that more centered, um, if you want more space this way, um, spend some time uh, to really reorganize this and make sure that your code is clean and visible. And this will just help you in the long run as you build larger applications. So everything looks pretty good here though now. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire the output of the DAC assistant to the FFT power spectrum. So here I can see the time signal terminal. I'm going to go ahead and create a wire that wires also to the data output. So now here we have the output of this data going to the graph and also the analysis function. Next, you're also going to wire the output power spectrum to the frequency domain graph. I'm going to go ahead and move that up a little bit to get rid of the bends there as well. Now let's go back to the block diagram right before we run it and let's adjust uh, some of the axes on our frequency domain signal. So let's go ahead and right click on the X axis here. And here we can adjust uh, the X scale and Y scale. So let's go and click to turn off auto scaling for the X axis. And then we also want to change the maximum. So once again, we can double click and type in 50. And then hit enter and that will complete that action. Let's go ahead and run this application so we can see uh, this application running. And then as we change the acquisition rate, we can see how the FFT moves as well. And then once you're ready, you can go ahead and stop that application. And that completes part B, where we were able to run an analysis function on our application. Uh, all we had to do to add this analysis function was add one more block and write one more wire to, or two more blocks and, one, and two more wires uh, and wire it to the output of the DAC assistant. And we're able to see both the signal and the analysis in the same place, which is really neat. We're now going to go ahead and move to part C, where we're going to be saving our data to a file. So let's go ahead, right click on our block diagram, and let's go to uh, File I.O., and then let's select Write to Measurement File. And we're going to go ahead and place that right there. And now a configuration, a configuration window appears. Uh, so we're using the Write to Measurement File Express VI. Again, this is another fast VI that allows us to really quickly um, save our data and set up uh, a way, set up a way to, uh, to save our data. So similar to the Express VI of the DAC Assistant, this is just another one of those tools. So here we can see the file name that we're saving it to. Uh, we can change that to, you know, uh, exercise to data. And we're going to save it to one file. If the file name already exists, use the next available file name. We want to save it to an Excel file. And then we're going to set the time column to one column only. And we can go ahead and click OK. And that'll just load similar to how it built the VI for DAC Assistant. And uh, we're kind of running a little bit tight on space here. So I'm going to resize the while loop and then move these two items down. 
uh, just so things are pretty clean. The next thing that you want to do is wire the signals input of this to the output of the DAC assistant. So now if I go ahead and run this application, I can now, it'll now save the data to the Excel file that we specified. Um, so let's go ahead and hit run. Uh, we can change this so you can just, just see some interaction. And then now let's go ahead and hit stop. Uh, if I use my file explorer, I can navigate to the spot where our data is going to be saved. And so we saved it under lab view data. And then we can see here the exercise two data. Now this will open up in Excel and we can see the data that we just saved. So here we have our time and then we have the voltage information as well. So that was pretty quickly just how to save our data to a file. I'm going to go ahead and close that and not save and then exit that out as well. Um, one thing that we did that was, uh, you know, for better or worse here, when we were creating this, uh, we set the file name here. And similar to how when we set the settings up in advance with the configuration wizard, we're also able to change it with these inputs and outputs here. So we're going to add a file path name uh, to the right to measurement file on this. So let's go ahead and add a file path control onto our front panel. So let's go ahead, right click on the front panel, fuse design system, string and path, and then select the file path control. And then you can resize this just as you need. And I want to take the file path name from this and copy and paste that right there into that file path. And you can see here again, once again, it's created this on our block diagram as well. So I'm going to move that to the side to create some room. And then we will wire this to the file path control. And that is this one right here that's titled file name. Um, so now every time I right before I run my application, I can change that here, uh, which is nice. So I don't have to enter the configuration wizard every single time. And then we can go ahead and run that and it would save to the next file name. Uh, I probably should have changed that in advance, but we already set that up. So now it would save under data two or um, data two test, uh, whatever what you want to save this as, um, you can set it. And that completes exercise two. Uh, I hope you all were able to learn a little bit more now about setting up data acquisition in LabVIEW. Uh, in this exercise, we're quickly able to run through setting up our data acquisition using the DAC Assistant, which was a really nice, fast, interactive way to set up our data acquisition, expand our application using an analysis function, and then even saving our data to a file. This is a really common set of tasks that people are trying to do in LabVIEW, like acquiring data, saving it to a file, and running some analysis. So I hope you got some basics in that uh, from this exercise. And if you stick around for exercise three, we'll be expanding this application even more to include another type of measurement. Um, and see you there.